uh, Tom Blevins. I'm an endocrinologist in Austin, Texas, and I'm at, at a practice called Texas Diabetes and Endocrinology, uh, I'll say, here in Austin. We have three offices, if you know Austin, and North, Middle, South, Round Rock, and South, South Austin. And I, I'm, a, I'm a boarded endocrinologist. That's what I do, cardiometabolic, diabetes, all those things. So in, in summary for this first part of the talk, terzepatide is this one molecule, new class of drug, has a dual GIP and GLP-1-like effect. We've defined that. And, and it, the, these, these activities are probably at least complementary. They may be synergistic and on, when it comes to various outcomes, including weight. And, and uh, so we, we saw really robust reductions in, in A1C. So now what I'm going to do, that's the diabetes, and that's the approval. We have approval for treating people with diabetes type 2, not PD, not type 1, type 2, with this agent. But what I'd like to do now is go ahead and talk about something that's not, that's not indicated for yet, and that is uh, treatment of, of, of obesity. So the pure weight loss trials now, we're going to get away from diabetes, we're going to talk about pure like weight loss trials were surmount one, two, three, and four. And in the surmount one is is the one that was just obesity, man, obesity management. There is a trial though that's going to be done in people with type two for just obesity management and and also blood sugar control. And then there's some others that are that are uh, on, on the way too. And and so let, let's 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 move on and talk about the surmount one. And that's the one that got published as well. So in surmount one, basically you take people who are overweight, and I'll tell you more about the, the criteria in a minute, and you put them on the 5, 10, or 15. Now you start at 2.5, remember, and you make your way up to 5, 7.5, 10, 12.5, and then 15. That's what you do. And you, you take it up very, very gradually. And so, um, and, and then this, this study uh, go, goes on for, for a good, uh, well over a year, and and then compared to placebo, everybody got very very thorough diet education and you know lower your calorie education. To get in the study, you had to have a BMI over 30 or over 27 if a person had comorbidities, and that, that those included dyslipidemia, hypertension. They could have prediabetes, and, and they could have obstructive sleep apnea, and they could have cardiovascular disease too. They couldn't get in if they were they're going to have a surgery for obesity or if they had type 1. And, and one thing I want to tell you, if the demographics, when you look at the article, th this is a well uh, sort of recruited trial. And the average age was about 47, number one, uh, about 69% overall female. And that's true of most of the trials. Uh, as far as racial uh, sort of mix, white was about 80%. Black or African American, about 14 percent, and then Asian, and and there was uh, Hispanic was about 26 percent. So this is actually a very, uh, uh, fairly fairly representative trial of the population, and the the average weight at the time of entry was uh, 104 kilos, and let's see what else we want to talk about. Prediabetes, yeah, about 40 percent of people did have prediabetes, and we're going to get a look at what happens with them, and I'm going to go through that in a kind of a macro really. Blood pressures were actually in pretty good shape. The people were on medicine. And, and so let me just jump into results. The, at the lowest dose, 16%. Placebo people lost 2.4%. You know that placebo effect's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, but the people on 5 milligrams, 16%. And, and the people on, on the highest dose, 22.5%. That's percent. That's not pounds. That's percent. Think about it. Percent, percent, percent. And what would you be happy with when you tell people, I want you to lose some weight? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic with 5%. 7%, 10%, I am just bowled over. 22.9% at 72 weeks. Now, how does that translate in terms of pounds? Uh, well, you can tell me. Remember, the kilo thing was uh, about 100 and something, low, you know, 100 and two, I think I said kilos at baseline on, on mean. Well, the people at the highest dose lost on, on uh, average about 50 pounds. Uh, the people in the 10 lost about 40 something and thir mid 30s for the five. I mean, that's just something else. And, and that was, uh, uh, and so the average weight reduction, depending on the dose, was 35 to 52 pounds. So it depends on the dose. 
and, and the highest those people lost more. What about uh, percent of people reaching their target? Uh, about 90% plus people lost more than 5%. That's one thing. Okay, so that's good. And we've always been really happy with that. Uh, about um, uh, uh, half of the people got uh, that were in the weight loss part lost more than 20%. And we can cut this all different kinds of ways. About one third of people got greater than 25% of their body weight loss uh, at the original body weight. And so, you know, we can slice and dice this in five different directions. And it turns out that uh, it, you might ask, well, what percentage of people actually responded? People ask that question. I do too. And, you know, what? What percent of people responded actually responded? It was 97.7 percent. So very, very low percentage of people didn't respond or didn't lose weight. So that that, that weight loss data is is robust. But what about um, improvement in metabolic measures? Okay, so people lose weight. We, we know that that confers great benefit. Well, let's talk about the metabolic changes. If you look at body fat mass loss, uh, we're talking about mean, this is a subgroup of people, about 160 people, who actually had uh, DEXA body composition. It wasn't everyone. And, and the people on, on treatment, uh, there was about a 33.9% fat loss. And, and then what about hemoglobin A1C? Well, uh, remember they didn't have diabetes, but they could have prediabetes and they had A1Cs. And, and A1C reductions were like 0 0.4 up to 0 0.5 in, 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 uh, that from a low to the high dose. So reduction in A1C was seen. Okay, what about glucose, fasting glucose? Well, duh. If you lose weight, you're going to see the fasting glucose drop, right? Well, it's important to see numbers. We want numbers. We want data. And we want science. Well, the numbers are uh, the fasting glucose dropped and, and uh, dropped uh, substantially, seven up to 10 points. And the, the baseline glucose in this group was 95. Remember, this is not a group of people with diabetes. So th th there was kind of a, a pretty close to an average decrease in fasting glucose of 10 yeah, milligrams per deciliter. And, and again, focus, th this, this is not a group of people with diabetes. You're not gonna see like a 30, 40 point drop as you do see in the people with diabetes. These are people that, that have either normal glucose tolerance, 40%, as I mentioned earlier, have di prediabetes. Now, insulin levels dropped also. Like another duh, if you lose weight, the insulin levels fasting are gonna drop, and they dropped down about four or five uh, milliunits per liter, and, and that's good, so less insulin resistance, and the percent change there was about 47%. Uh, with terzepatide, because remember, insulin levels don't necessarily have to be real high in people who don't have diabetes. What about change in lipids? Well, w we see what we thought we would see. You lose weight, your triglycerides drop, and that definitely happened. 27% decrease in triglycerides. That's pretty good. That's on par. It may even be better than the drop we see with some of the medicines we use for triglycerides, depending on the baseline triglyceride, too. And, and so the HDL went up uh, about 7.9 uh, points. And, and so free fatty acids dropped. Uh, what else do you want to know? LDL dropped about 6.9. And uh, that, that, that kind of covers the territory, no surprise. Metabolic, th this is a cardiometabolic drug. drug and, and change in liver enzymes, mm, fatty liver, you know, all that. Well, there, there was an improvement there too. And, uh, the de decrease in liver enzymes um, uh, information has to be explored further because could th would this be a drug for fatty liver? We don't know. Or do we think it could be? Oh yeah, we do. We we do. This we does. But I mean, I'm not I'm not represent, representing anyone but myself here. But you know, if you lose weight, fatty liver gets better. I think I think it's safe to say. Systolic blood pressure. Uh, there were reductions there, four or five points. Uh, reductions also in diastolic. And, and so that's also no surprise. And remember, these weren't people with really high pressures uh, to begin with. They're like 123 systolic, and diastolic was about 79. So if you drop five, three millimeters of mercury, systolic, diastolic, uh, that's actually a pretty nice drop. So the summary of efficacy results would be that that weight reduction leads to significant improvements in multiple metabolic parameters, as you would expect. And so that's, that's actually a really big deal. A fairly high percentage of people actually uh, converted 
from prediabetes to normal glucose tolerance too. And, and so that, that's also uh, really, really interesting, I think. So uh, uh, is it going to be approved for prediabetes? I don't think so. But is it going to be approved for obesity? I frankly think, based on this trial, it, it, and hopefully there'll be another trial that says the same thing uh, soon. And do I think it's going to get approved for obesity management? Yes, I do. Uh, do I think it needs to hurry up? Yep. Uh, 